welcome to lecture 33 which is on the data collection with the mobile laser scanner. So it is in continuation to basically the previous lecture. Uh, here the uh, LIDAR based systems will be employed on some mobile platform and data will be collected for various platforms. So let us learn the utility of mobile laser scanners. So we know the LIDAR based systems they provide very very high accuracy when uh, we are very close to the object you get much much higher accuracy. And uh, they can cover uh, area is smaller when we are closer to the object. But when we are little away it can cover large area. So when we are moving on a uh, platform like a vehicle then probably we can cover very very large area with the help of these systems which is uh, perhaps not possible with the help of the terrestrial laser scanner when we are shifting. The other advantage of such devices is that um, they work day and night. So you can collect the data even during the night times with the help of the laser based devices. So all that LIDAR based systems they are providing us this additional advantage. So when our study area is very large. Okay, when uh, we have to maybe you know in some urban setup we have to collect the data or we are standing close to the dam site uh, where we want to uh, not only cover the dam but the surrounding area as well. So if area is slightly uh, medium size of area then maybe it is much more time consuming to collect the data with the help of the terrestrial laser scanner. So in that case what we will do is we will go for uh, the system which can be mounted on some moving platform and that could be uh, best could be a vehicle. So as you can see in these pictures here the uh, device the LIDAR device which works on the laser beam technology has been mounted on the vehicular platform and they are not very special kind of a vehicle. Uh, uh, sometimes on the normal vehicle also you can mount them but with slight modification in the vehicle they are mounted and then uh, because they are automatic in nature so you move the vehicle on the road it will collect the data for you. So this vehicular based uh, imaging and the LIDAR data collection system it looks like that it's a, it looks like a normal vehicle and on the top of that on the roof of that uh, where you put the luggage in the vehicle there you have all the mounting uh, devices you can mount your system laser scanner you can mount the camera here also you can mount the GPS device which can collect uh, the coordinates of the data. So if I show you the uh, top view of the roof of the vehicle so all that arrangement to fix up that uh, is given in the top if you have the digital camera because yeah, at the same time you can take the images and if you have the two cameras viewing the same area then those images could be used to create a 3D model as we learned in photogrammetry. Then we have the GPS bit antennas are there so it will continuously collect the data of those coordinates then we have the laser scanner device will scan the whole area and also we have a 360 degree digital camera. So it will move in all the direction it will take the images all around the vehicle. So all these devices now are fitted on the top of the vehicle and uh, the uh, person is driving the vehicle uh, on uh, the road or in the area and collecting the data with those devices which are more or less automated in nature and in the vehicle also we have the processing facility, viewing facility. We have a small uh, computer, a laptop where the data is continuously coming in. We can see the distribution of the data, the quality of the data, the profile of the data and also uh, if you want we can do the real time processing also. So we are getting multiple data from this kind of a platform not only just the laser data but we are getting the other data also. So here you can see that the vacular based systems it is actually moving along the urban setup. So that is the biggest advantage when you are working uh, with this kind of a system. If uh, there is a crowd 
you are not actually your work is not hampered due to that because your instrument is situated at a certain height and which can monitor all around not only in the front but at the back at both the sides so it will it will take the panoramic view it will actually scan the whole area around as the vehicle is moving with a certain speed and also the data is geo referenced because we have the gps coordinate so all the images the camera is taking and all the data which is the lidar based systems is scanning so we are getting the geo reference data so it will reduce our time in the field because very very large area will be covered in the shortest possible time and again a very good high quality data will be produced again here the laser system is a 360 degree so it can, it will rotate in all the direction and will try to cover the larger area now this kind of uh, work is useful when we have to map or collect the data for a larger area of the terrain if there are undulating terrain a large area is there then we can collect the data very quickly create a 3d model and this can be used for large number of civil engineering application it could be a urban survey or we have to do the transport planning in a particular area so uh, all the data which we are collecting could be used uh, for different different applications purpose and very good application is for surveying and mapping of the inaccessible areas because there are certain areas where vehicle can move and collect the data from a distance but it is difficult to actually go to that particular area if it is a you know a steep area mountainous area but the vehicle from a distance can take so it saves lot of manpower lot of time also uh, if we see the uses we are using this data which is collected from the mobile platform for uh, topographical survey mapping a large area and uh, construction industry we are using it we are using for planning of the highways and the railways bridges a uh, new bridges if you have to design power transmission line alignment of that communication towers or assets mapping infrastructure and assets mapping we are also using it for certain uh, mathematical computation like volume computation the area computation so that is also can be done with the help of such device now uh, you can see here that this is a, a system similar to the previous one which i have explained but specifically more specifically designed to collect the data about the road what is the condition of the road if there are undulations in the road if there are potholes in the roads if there are cracks developed in the road so we have different devices which are fitted on this and this is called automated road survey system and this automated road survey system has a laser based device fitted into it in addition to what you can see is a gps there there is a digital camera two cameras which will actually create uh, we take the images in the overlap region and then uh, you can see in the 3d model and then there is a uh, you know laser mounted system so it will collect the laser beam data and inside the vehicle there is a data acquisition system so where you can see the pattern of the data and uh, you can analyze the results so this is a uh, system specifically designed to collect the data for the road so we have for example the camera here on the top and gps antenna there is a laser profilometer so that we can get the uh, profile of the road so one can find out the various things like rut when you have the transverse profiler you can find out the rut depth so when you sometimes you know you are traveling on the road you get lot of jerks also in addition to uh, potholes and the cracks so those ruts also can be identified when you are drawing the different profile so one can see at the back also you have the laser sources one source and the another so so lot of data by different devices is being collected for the road and then we are analyzing this data with the help of the software uh, whether we have a photogrammetric software or we want to analyze the point cloud data 
and create a 3D model. So, one can create a 3D model of the potholes, one can find out from that 3D model what is the length of the crack, what are the patterns of the crack, how much is the width of the crack and once we know the three dimensional potholes, probably we can find out uh, the volume of the material which is required to fill the potholes. So, for road repair and maintenance kind of a work for example, these kind of devices uh, where uh, geometrics uh, based equipment are fitted uh, they are they are very very helpful actually to give you the required information. So, maybe this kind of information is very very useful to uh, PWD engineers. Now, this is the example of the uh, data for a railway line. So, you can see the railway track very clearly uh, different tracks are seen here and uh, by the side of the tracks one can see the different vegetation cover trees and the railway platform. So, maintenance of the railway line also can be carried out with the help of such detailed information. Now, the other picture is for the hilly road. So, for the hilly region we can see um, that there is a uh, curve feature here. So, the central part of this is the road and both sides is the other data which has been collected by the device. So, a lot of uh, this data has been collected now uh, when this uh, uh, system is moving on the road then forward direction, backward direction and the side directions. So, whatever uh, sides, whatever sites are visible, it will collect the data up to that. So, particularly in hilly region what happens is that the uh, vision is obstructed because of the hill mass on both the sides. So, uh, it will collect the data to a certain extent and then we can use this data to create the 3D model of the. So, new road planning new railway line planning, maintenance of the roads and if there are curves which are uh, sharp curves and they are to be redesigned, modified, remodeled. So, that all can be done with the help of the and also we can see whether the land is available and if we change the shape of the curve and if we make this road straighten whether the land is available or how much is the uh, uh, filling required in order to carry out that work. So, all that analysis has become very very simple once the data is collected from this mobile platform. So, this is again another example where uh, on both sides you can see the buildings have been covered and uh, minute details you know including the uh, windows and doors and all other features which we can see on the facade of the building. So, on the face of the building. So, particularly very very useful for uh, elevation of the structures. So, whatever is the face of that particular structure can be mapped and then detailed analysis can be done. So, one can carry out the measurements of the you know these kind of images the people have actually also used to know how much uh, will be the cost of the paint if this building is to be repainted in some other color. So, uh, one can even identify uh, the here the persons which are on the railway track. There's, so, there are two persons uh, during that uh, scanning time you know they have also been scanned. So, maybe you know we have to remove these kind of uh, details when we carry out the analysis in our editing process. But this is a very very detailed information and very useful information particularly when uh, we are doing some kind of a urban planning a study when we are doing some kind of a development of a smart city. So, this data is very very useful. Now, this you can see is the uh, um, data which has been collected uh, for MNNIT Allahabad campus. So, this is the entire campus data which has been collected and uh, very detailed information is there. Uh, we can identify the different buildings, we can find out the open area, the playground, we can also identify uh, the administrative building and other uh, uh, hostels and etcetera, etcetera. So, this is a, a topographical mapping which we can carry out with the help of this data. So, this is uh, 
the height structure so that we can see the uh, all the buildings and the surrounding vegetation cover in their relative height. So, we uh, come to know uh, if we have to in the open ground if you have to construct some building and it is a high rise building we will we'll, we'll know that how that building will look like aesthetically as compared to the surrounding. So, we can see uh, high rise building we can see some low rise buildings also and then there is a uh, greenery all around. So, very detailed information we can get directly from such kind of images. Then other applications could be uh, transmission line. You know uh, in the transmission line uh, if we have to carry out very detailed inspection of the connections. So, detailed inspection of the connection if some connections are loosened and there is a rust coming out. So, uh, that kind of a study also can be carried out when we are collecting the data from this. And uh, one can see the people have identified actually defect. So, they have located the defect also in the transmission line. Uh, you can also see that the red line is that line where the one plate is one circle plate is insulator bell is missing. So, there is one glass insulator bell is missing and that defect one can uh, identify from this kind of a data and then uh, maintenance work or replacement work could be carried out. So, this it is a and uh, not only just useful for civil engineer for mapping purpose, but you can see here the electrical engineer, the power engineers are also using this kind of a data for their own application part. Now, this is a uh, showing the uh, wires, electric wires on the uh, poles here, these are the electric poles. So, there are wires. So, they are sagging because of the weight and because of the distance between the two electric poles. So, between the poles you know there are wires one can actually see uh, whether the vegetation cover is to be chopped out. This is going to obstruct the wire or not. So, here in this diagram we can see the green one is the vegetation cover with the different different heights. and there are four wires on the top and there are uh, poles, three poles. So, we have to identify uh, what are the danger points where the vegetation is overgrowing and they, these are becomes the danger points later on. So, potential danger points could be located with the help of these and if the vegetation is to be trimmed that kind of work could be carried out. So, one can find out very truly very exactly you know how much is the height of the vegetation cover and what is the difference between the wire and the vegetation. Now, mapping the power infrastructure. So, power engineers, electrical engineers are using this kind of a data for mapping their infrastructure because uh, it is very difficult to physically go and each and every tower. There are low tension tower, there are high tension towers. So, very, very difficult actually to physically go and collect the data. So, uh, you can map the insulator, you can map the power lines, you can map the towers and uh, generate the complete assets, find out the defect and you can uh, also take up the repair and the maintenance work or upgradation if re required. So, this kind of a data is found to be very, very useful in other sector also. Now, you can see uh, this is a visualization of the tree along the power line corridor. So, I have I have shown you um, there are towers there, uh, poles there. So, this is one tower, this is another tower and then in between a distance of about 800 meter what are the height of the trees that has been shown and the crown also. So, bigger circles are showing the bigger crown here. So, individual tree has been shown after taking the data from that and color different colors are indicating the height of the tree. So, this is called the visualization. So, you can create the visualization of the trees 
along the power line corridor and then you can use this data for taking some decision about that repair and maintenance work. Now uh, in construction industry uh, developing the construction management system it has been used because once the data is collected then you can compare this data with the previous data and you can uh, monitor the progress in the construction industry. So lot of construction industry are collecting this kind of a data and they are creating uh, 3D maps and they are using it uh, for monitoring their construction uh, on time. You can carry out the dimension measurements of the different structures. You can prepare the profile and cross section and also you can determine the uh, construction material volume. So volume construction, so with the help of the software that uh, uh, computation has become very very easy. You can also compare the construction site layout design with the actual line diagram. So whether the construction is going on as per the design drawing or not, you can superimpose the two together and can see where the deviation has taken place or where the dimension is different than the design drawing dimension by superimposing the two data sets. So you can visualize the construction activity in time series or you can do some kind of a numerical uh, mathematical calculation from this data. So there are several steps which the construction industries are following in order to do that. You know they are uh, survey and design, post processing the data and then the data visualization is there. So this is uh, the example of uh, that uh, Ames uh, Patna site where uh, this is a very very large land which has been completely you know scanned in 3D environment, 3D model has been created from the uh, point cloud data and the construction progress one can carry, one can create a 3D model of that particular area and uh, you can create a texture based map from the actual 3D map. So this is a 3D map on the right side and this is a texture based map which has been created on the left side which is black and white. Not love that. You can compare the design drawing with the actual. So you have the ortho image you can superimpose it on the top of it and see uh, how much is the difference, how much is the actual deviation. Then we can use some deep learning uh, techniques nowadays, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is finding its way into the geomatics engineering as well. So we can actually create a 3D model and try to compare from the data set. So here a deep learning classification is used actually to find out the ground, house, pole and tree which are uh, for which the data was collected and very good accuracy up to 96.5% accuracy uh, could be achieved. So this is another example where uh, we can apply actually these techniques once we collect the data and we can get very very high accuracy as far as the uh, the uh, creation of that 3D model and the measurements are concerned from the data. So these are some of the advantages of the mobile laser systems. We can collect the data at a very very high resolution at a very high accuracy. So when we do that it will save our lot of time because we can get the data large quantity of data so with the higher frequency quickly we can collect them. We can actually use this data uh, to monitor and manage the activity on the area. So if we have this data after a certain interval of time then we can monitor that particular area and with the help of the difference in the coordinate systems we can reach to a certain conclusion. So this is all about the mobile laser scanning methods.